Hello, everybody, and welcome to the official European League of Football show. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, football brings us all together, and I love that. And today we are heading over to Austria, to Vienna to be more precise, because we are focusing on the Vienna Vikings, who are new to our league, and therefore I will be having head coach Chris Kellesay joining me first, followed by DeAndre Overton, the new wide receiver, and last but not least, former Vikings player Bernhard Zajkowicz, who went from last year's IPP to the Cardinals practice squad. But let's start with Chris, who should be here with me right now. There he is. Hello, Jenny Pax. Hello, Chris. Pleasure to virtually meet you. Welcome nice to the to European you. League of Football. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, an adventure and exciting, and we haven't even started yet. So uh, it's I good know, to be here. I know. Everybody's looking forward to the second season. But let's start with you first, because you have been with the Vienna Vikings since 2004, um, starting with college football in the States. What is your road to Austria? My road to Austria it actually started before that in 1999. Uh, I graduated from college. I'm planning on going to graduate school. And uh, one of my teammates had gone to the year before to France. And he said, hey, Chris, you, you got to come out here. It's awesome. It's going to be fun. Uh, so I spent a little time in Paris for a season, and then halfway through the season, I ended up in contact with the Vikings. And yeah, I came out here, played three years, and kind of traveled in between and coached back in the U.S. Uh, at my university. And, um, you know, I had some stops along the way, but uh, it, at the end, in 2004, I came back here, and I've been here ever since. And you've played a major role in the Vikings' success. It's eight Austrian championships, five Euro Bowl championships and you were named the AFL coach of the year twice so it's obvious that you and the Vikings have a winning recipe um what's the key to your success it's the whole thing it's not definitely not about me it's about the the program and uh the members that the, the Austrian guys that come in and just continuing to develop uh, our coaching staff, continuing to develop the players, and uh, mainly our youth program, bringing guys up so that they can perform uh, at the men's team level. And then obviously the organization that goes around it, the, the volunteers and uh, the staff and our, and our obviously our, our great operations crew, um, you know, getting all those people together and, and, and going in one direction, uh, that's been key to our success. And then, you know, all the, Finally, all the guys that get a step on the football field and, and perform and, and get out there on the field and train. And what drove the Vikings to join the European League of Football in season two? Well, I've always been of the opinion that, you know, the Vikings need to compete internationally. And we're always looking for international competitions uh, throughout the years. You know, it was the Euro Bowl and then it was the ECTC or the CELF and there was a lot of different international competitions that the Vikings participated in and and had success in and, and our eyes were on the ELF very closely and uh, after the first season I think there was a lot of uh, they did a great job with it the, the competition level the the, the media coverage uh, how the players were treated um, and it, it became an exciting thing and at the end of this ELF season we you know we sat down together and said hey let's see what the interest level is in Vienna um, obviously Vienna a, has a tradition of American football, second biggest German speaking. It has the market uh, for American football. Um, and ultimately, it came down to a, a decision that was good for us. And well, I mean, the conference you are entering is pretty strong. You will be facing the current ELF champion and you are together with the other Austrian team, just to name two of them. Which matchup are you looking forward to the most? All of them. <laughs> uh, I mean, all the ones uh you know the home stadium that we're going to be playing and it's not announced yet and uh just being able to play at that level under these rules is different we have a very different roster and, and team uh that we're putting together here in vienna um and that's exciting so you know obviously we played innsbruck i don't know i think it's 20 times in the last four years so being able to play uh some some different teams we're going to be playing in poland we're going to be playing in istanbul and barcelona Stuttgart, uh, Frankfurt, and that's that's exciting for I think our players, our fans, uh, the base of the Vikings, and um, you know it's it's going to be exciting for the franchise. And what would you say is going to be the biggest challenge for the Vikings? 
Interesting. Uh, I think there's a lot of challenges. I, I don't think there's one big one. It's, it's entering a new league with new rules. Uh, we've never played with this many imports before. I mean, in, in Austria, we played with only two Americans on the field and all of a sudden it's four uh, plus the eight E players. Um, that drastically changes things as well. So I think uh, the challenge of it's the tactics of it, um, but just making the product bigger, um, making sure that the product that we're bringing to our fans uh, is is going to be an incredible environment to, to, to host teams from, from around Europe. Um, so I think there's a lot of things that go around this and, and just being a first-year team in the ELF. Well, you just mentioned your work during the off-season because you are adding great players to your roster. What can you tell us about them, such as your new American quarterback and, of course, DeAndre, who is joining our show in a couple of minutes? Well, I mean, recruiting's recruiting. It's it's <laughs> always a fun deal to, to meet guys. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a mix of guys that know something about European football. And then there's going to be guys that, you know, are kind of out of the blue that, that I've never um, heard about in football in Europe. Uh, so, you know, developing those relationships, getting them ready to move and go out of the country. Uh, that's always a challenge and obviously the paperwork and, um, you know, doing the playbook stuff with them and meeting coaches virtually. Um, having all those challenges is is something that's fun because you get to meet some new people and it's pretty exciting. I think it's exciting for the fans that you hear, you know, a DeAndre Overton from Clemson's coming out or, or Jackson Erdman who played in the fan control league with Marshawn Lynch and, uh, you know, some other professional athletes. That's always fun. And um, it creates a, a certain type of hype around – Uh, what's going on and and we got a couple months still until the season but it's inching closer and closer yeah definitely and we all want time to go pretty fast because also we can't wait for our championship game which will take place in austria in klagenfurt is that a sign maybe do you think that the vikings have a chance even though that you're new to the league to go all the way to the championship Well, I mean, our plan is always when we step on the football field to perform at our best. And we believe uh, that, that we're amongst the ranks of the best teams in Europe, uh, but we have to go out there and perform. And that's a, an amazing goal to do that in that stadium. We won there, I believe the last time was in 2017. We won the Austrian Bowl there. And, you know, that's our goal. Uh, give ourselves an opportunity every time we step on the football field to win a football game. And we do that enough. Uh, we do that enough in our conference. It's going to be a very difficult conference. Um, we're going to make the playoffs and then obviously you give yourselves an opportunity to win a championship. And that's, uh, that's what we've been about. Yeah. And one guy who wants to win the championship for sure is the lovely gentleman who is joining our show now, your new wide receiver, Hydre DeAndre. Welcome to the show and welcome to the European League of Football. Thank you for having me. Can't wait for <laughs> it, man. Well, we are thankful and grateful for having you and to have another great talented player on the league because you've proven it you won the ncaa championship twice and you're coming from one of the best eras of clemson tigers to one of the best teams in europe how did you and the vikings join forces uh so uh one of the coaches reached out on instagram and uh kind of sent out my film that was that was looking at me for a little minute now so i reached out to them and we kind of made it happen so i'm glad i joined the team and just excited to get started Never been to and, Europe before, and uh, ah. it's going to be an exciting experience for me. You have never been to Europe before? Never. Uh, so is there any particular country or city that you want to see? How do you imagine or picture it? I think we lost him for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I think the answer you was going to Because say you was, didn't was move Vienna. Either. I was, was like, Vienna, of course. <laughs> Uh -oh. oh, there, there he is. back. There, he is. there we go. <laughs> so what are you looking forward to the most when thinking about Europe and coming to Europe? I'm just looking forward to seeing something different, uh, stepping out of my comfort zone, uh, you know, taking that risk, ready to get to the team and, uh, you know, make an impact, try to become a leader within the team and be someone that they can depend on. And how will you show the Vikings that they made the right move with you? What makes you an exceptional wide receiver uh showing them that i'm a great person on and off the field uh having an impact like i said the first time and uh just competing being a consistent guy that they can depend on um i think accountability is important and if you're accountable you know you're a winner you have that that passion that drive for you it affects a lot of people uh it's contagious and the whole team you eventually you know tag along and become one it would be it would be a great team 
And do you know any other European League of Football players? Will there be an on or off field reunion from season uh, one, for example? I feel like I know one that I was training with in Greenville, South Carolina, but I wasn't uh, familiar with the team that he played for. It was kind of all new to me, so I got to learn all the teams. Perfect. Well, that's going to be a big adventure, but trust me, Vienna is a beautiful city and I'm Definitely. sure you're going to have an amazing time. And I mean, we are, of course, we are, we are, we are looking forward to our season to kick off in summer. But right now, the whole football world is focusing on the States and having a closer look there because it's NFL playoff time, which means win or go home. Are you watching the games? Watching the games, definitely. Uh, this one is special for me uh, just because I have two teammates. Well, I actually have more teammates on both of those teams. And it's just exciting to see where those guys came from. And they're in their position right now. So, But I, I just sit back and watch and just enjoy the show. I just went to uh, the Bengals game like a week last week. And it was a great game, man. Oh, yes, it was. But all of those games have been insane, Chris. Don't you agree? Because you are an it's Austrian TV expert wild wild weekend every single game i'm i'm supposed to be the expert i picked the wrong winner in all four of those games and uh, up until the last minute all four of my teams i thought we're going to win um but it didn't happen i mean you look at the Bengals and what they're doing with joe burrow all those receivers t higgins and, and jamar chase man they're just you know they had to battle the whole game because joe burrow was just what was he sacked nine times yeah and i was loving it i was like hey titans and then all of a sudden hasselback is, is turning the football over and gave yeah. him a shot and they came down and and mcpherson hit the field goal and won you know aaron Rodgers. i'm a i'm a cal guy um i had an opportunity when i was at cal as a ga to be there with him and you know so i'm a, i was rooting for for the packers and you know they they got to play some special teams let's go <laughs> and, you know and, uh, you know, the two games on uh, this past uh, Sunday were just amazing. I think, the, you know, the, uh, the last game of the weekend, um, my goodness, it, it gives me a headache here. Uh, thinking about those teams running up and down the field, the Kansas City Chiefs, and 13 seconds for Patrick Mahomes. I'm thinking the game is over. My Buffalo Bills that I, that I picked to win the Super Bowl this year, I'm no expert. You know, Josh Allen <laughs> scores a touchdown. I'm thinking the game's over and Patrick Mahomes, two plays down the field, field goal. And then the coin toss, the coin toss won the game. Yeah. I think either team got the ball, they were going to go down and score. So Most definitely. Yeah. Definitely. amazing weekend, amazing weekend of football. Yeah, DeAndre T. Higgins is one of your friends, right? And the other one plays for the Chiefs. Definitely. So who do you think any of them is going to make it? Is uh, win the Super well, Bowl? I know, I know one of them will make it to the Super Bowl just because they're playing each other. So that's it's a win-win for me on the outside, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a great game to watch for sure. Yeah. And Chris, you mentioned Aaron Rodgers because I know that you can share your Aaron, Aaron Rodgers story with us. <laughs> well, I, a lot of people have asked me, hey, you coached Aaron Rodgers. I, well, you know what? I was a GA <laughs> at the time. Uh, my job was to make sure that his parents got to the hotel to with the head coach in, in the recruiting times. And, you know, during that time where his parents were in that meeting, I got to play ping pong with Aaron Rodgers. And, um, you know, the, how the story goes, I beat him every time uh, that, that we played. So, uh, but I was there two years uh, with him uh, before I went back to Europe. Um, obviously, nobody knew about him at that time. He was a sophomore. And by the time he was a junior, he was pretty well known. Uh, but he was just a kid from Northern California, didn't get a scholarship out of high school uh, that he liked. And so he went to JC and then uh, we weren't actually recruiting Aaron Rodgers. We were recruiting Garrett Cross, his, uh, his tight end at Butte College. And Coach Tedford said, hey, who's the quarterback? Let's, let's get that guy. And that's how Aaron Rodgers ended up at Cal. Amazing story. Well, DeAndre, I know you don't have too much time. So, um, well, thank you very much for being on the show here today. And I'm clearly looking forward to watching you out on the field in summer. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. See you much. a little bit, DeAndre. Right. So, Chris, let's continue with the NFL playoffs. Who do you think, what's your prediction, who will win the Super Bowl oh, out of those knows? four teams? Who knows now? <laughs> I, I, you have to say the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I mean, if you look at the NFC, uh, you know, nobody expected the 49ers to go as far as they did with the, with the injuries they had. Nobody expected the Bengals to go as far as they did, um, except for maybe the Bengals. They're playing with a lot of confidence <laughs> right now. Um, 
and then you have the LA Rams who are really all in this year because, yeah. you know, they, they spent a lot of draft, uh, you know, draft picks and, and whatnot on Von Miller and making sure OBJ's got in there. Uh, they invested a lot into this season and they're all in for a Super Bowl. So I really do think that the Rams and the Chiefs will be playing. Um, and whoever yeah. wins out of that one, I, I wouldn't count out Patrick Mahomes and, you know, Tyreek Hill and, and Travis Kelsey and that crew. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And uh, when looking at the MVP, who is your MVP of the season? I think it's going to be Aaron Rodgers. I think there's a lot of haters out there. And I mean, he, he's an interesting guy and uh, he said some things are maybe not so popular um, in, in what we're going through in the pandemic right now. Um, but it's hard to question his performance in, on the football field, uh, especially in those that last five games of the season. He was just tearing it up. I think he had 20 touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, so Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady will probably win the MVP this year. Yeah, and Tom Brady, you just mentioned him. Do you think we saw his last NFL game? I would never say never. Um, but, you know, when he got hit in the first quarter there and he's coming off the field, he's, you know, his lips bleeding and they paused that picture on him. He just said, That's, I think the first time that I think that he really looked old. Uh, I never mm -hmm. thought of Tom Brady as, as being that guy. And even though, you know, we're, I think we're about the same age, uh, what he does and his doing is is amazing um you know it's just a pleasure to watch one of the greatest ever uh, play the football game yeah and what what do you think about aaron Rodgers? will he retire will he go to a different team who knows oh. who knows he's his own man and he's going to do whatever is best for aaron Rodgers. and um it's interesting because i think a lot of the meat You know, when you get into the locker room, things are a lot different than, than you know, doing interviews with media. Uh, obviously, his teammates uh, feel, you know, very highly about him. You especially talk about Devontae Adams and, and his relationship. Devontae Adams won't sign an extension until he finds out what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. So, um, you know, it really depends on a lot of things. I've heard uh, different, different stories about the front office there um, not being exactly the best place to work at. Um, but really it comes down to your teammates and, and being on the field with those guys. So, you know, they do have some leverage. Athletes do have a lot of leverage these days. And uh, we'll see what Aaron Rodgers pushes. If he wants to be there, he'll be there. If he doesn't, he's going to get traded. Yeah, well, he definitely has his own opinion. And uh, I mean, let's see if Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers will retire. I think a lot of people hope they, they continue. And one guy, one Austrian player who is right at the beginning of his career is joining us right now, Bernhard Seikowitz. You know him pretty well, Chris, because he was, or he's a former uh, Vikings player. Yeah, Bernhard was, uh... I've been coaching Bernhardt for a long time, uh, or I did coach him for a long time. He was a quarterback for a long time. I remember having quarterback practice uh, with him. And, you know, he's he's one of those special guys, special Vikings. He also coached in our youth program uh, when he got to the men's team. So he was uh, an offensive coordinator for our U16 team. And uh, just one of those guys that gave everything he could uh, to the program, whether that was on the football field as a player or off the football field. And he represents us very well. Uh, over in Arizona. Exactly. You just mentioned it. He got invited to the IPP in 2020 and 2022. And then 2022, he got picked by the Arizona Cardinals to join the practice squad. How did he, uh, how did he perform over there? Um, well, I wish I was on the field with him helping him out. <laughs> um, but, you know, the thing with, with Bernhardt is he works so hard. Um, you know, he deserves that. Everything he's done as far as changing his body, the work that he's put into the skill set with the, with the coaches here and his preparation um, and just the men mental side of it as well. He's, he's just such a tough guy. Um, I think he has a lot of that from his quarterbacking days and um, just how he handles himself. He goes about his business, um, you know, and he's one of those guys that will always be smiling. So it's, it's fun to be around him. Uh, he's got a, a unique sense of humor, so we miss him over here, but uh, I know he's got business to do and he's been taking care of it. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sure you're missing, missing such a great talent. And it seems that he's not ready yet or that he's not backstage yet. So there is another Bernhard. Let's, let's talk about him. Bernhard Reimann. Yeah. Exactly. Who is at college still, but he is going to or might be, he's potentially going to be a first round pick this year and you coached him as well right yeah both uh both the Bernhards uh we had them 
you know, it's interesting because there's, uh, I had both of them on uh, a national team or junior national team that went to China. And uh, so, you know, little did I know that both those guys, one was a quarterback, the other guy was a receiver. Bernhard Remen was a receiver at the time and uh, much skinnier than he is today. But I had both of those guys on the team with uh, Sandro Platzkummer as well. So we had an amazingly talented, uh, well, amazingly talented Austrian team that, that represented us well out there. But Bernhardt went to, um, through a process as well as uh, he went from receiver to tight end, just like Bernhard Sykovitz. And then he took one step further. Um, he went from tight end at Central Michigan, actually starting as a true freshman there. Um, and then they moved him down to offensive tackle, I believe in his junior year. So he had to put on a few pounds. Um, and if you look at his Instagram today, uh, you can see that it's good weight. Uh, he's He's been working amazing and he's just a stud he's a stud person super smart he's graduated as i think as a junior um so he's been one of those guys that's always done the right thing and he was in our vikings football academy um so that's a special academy here where some of our members can join and then they get extra training throughout the year and actually a nine uh excuse me a five-year program uh, for high school over here so they can do some extra training and you continue with this program now uh, during your time in the European League of football as well? Absolutely. Um, we yeah. have kids there from, uh, you know, from 14 till they graduate from high school. Uh, my son's in the program. Um, I coach in the program with a, with a coaching staff here. I'm just one of the assistants, but uh, George, George Zipsko uh, runs that whole program. And uh, it's, been, it's been something that, that started in 2009 with five guys. And uh, we have over 50 athletes in that program right now. Wow. And there he is. Hi, Bernhard. Welcome Hello. to the show. Pleasure to have you. What's up, Bernie? I What's know up, you and Chris know each other, and he was already telling us what an amazing talent you are. <laughs> yeah, good to hear. <laughs> and before that, we were talking about the NFL playoffs. So before we uh, let, let's let's quickly uh, focus on that again. Are you watching those games? Are you rooting for any of the four remaining teams? Uh, yeah, of course, I'm watching those games. Um, uh, I, I was really hoping that Aaron Rodgers would pull would pull one off, but unfortunately, he got kicked out by the 49ers. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I really like the game between Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. I, I think that could have been the Super Bowl already. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I guess Patrick Mahomes has a really strong team and um, maybe they take it all the way. He has a good and tight end, Bernie. <laughs> That's true, man. <laughs> and we were already talking about the fact that you made it from the IPP to the practice squad. How was this NFL season for you? Um, a lot of new things. I learned a lot. Um, of course, I never played at such a high level or um, even anything close to it. Um, of course, we play football over here, but those guys, they played in college and um, even none of us wants to admit it, but it still um, it still is a different level, and um, I had to learn a lot. But I feel way better and more confident now. So we will see what next training camp or next season holds for me. So what's the most? Uh, what what's the biggest difference? And and what did you learn the most? Like what 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 would you say? What was the key fact? Um. I mean, at the end of the day, football comes down to basics and those guys just have way more reps under their belts um, when it comes to pad level or throwing the hands, stuff like that, which is not really something you see on TV. Of course, you see the big catches and um, I don't know, the, the hard tackles. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes down to um, the basics. And I, I had to learn a lot. I had to make up a lot of reps that those guys already had. Um, and of course, body size and speed is just different. Over here, you have a couple guys that are tall. You have a couple guys that are big and a couple guys that are fast. But over there, everybody's big and fast. Um, even O-line and D-line can run and um, are super strong, too. So. Um, that was something I had to get used to, um, but I myself, I'm, and also that's the reason, like the IPP does a really good job of picking guys that um, if they um, put the work in, they have the body to succeed. So um, every one of those guys that got allocated last year has the potential to make it to a 53-man roster or even more. Um, 
and yeah that's something like to keep in the back of the head and don't forget why you're here um why you have to make up so much um but yeah it's it's been a ride and i'm glad i'm i'm able to do this um and yeah well we have two elf player joining the itp this year or basically yeah well going to the states this month um mm -hmm. what what will they experience there um they have a different um, location this year so maybe the um, program will be run a little bit different um, i'm not so sure i'm gonna be over there at some point sooner than later i'm gonna get to meet all those guys i'm really excited for the next generation basically of the ipp um but it's it's gonna be a hard 10 weeks i, I think they are 10 weeks again just like yeah. we did um so it's it's gonna be hard it's training every day it's just football and that's that's something new for all of those guys but it's important that they have this experience right now because when you get allocated to an nfl team it that's what your job is right you have to <laughs> focus on football every day and um um so that's also a reason they they design the program like that so they can see okay who can who can do it for 10 weeks um, and who doesn't get tired, who still um, works disciplined and yeah, but it's going to be tough. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> and speaking about signing, the Cardinals made you sign a future contract for the next training camp. So when and how will your NFL career journey continue? Um, yeah. So right now um, for us, the off season started already um so right now i just came back home i'm gonna enjoy the next few days with my family friends catch up a little bit um and then basically next week i'm gonna start um jumping into the off season um and just work on myself get faster get bigger get stronger and of course um still work on the football stuff i learned um so that when i get to training camp or otas before um, um i try to get there um like full head of steam and ready to roll um but yeah this future contract is something um they make most of the practice roster guys sign which um basically um ensures the the club that they are gonna have us so um if if i wouldn't have signed it there would have been a possibility for other teams to pick me up which probably wouldn't have happened because i didn't play a lot um but and that's why they make us sign those contracts. Okay, well, definitely crossing all our fingers for you, that's for sure. So before you joined the show, Chris was telling us what makes you such a great and talented football player. Now, you know the Vikings pretty well as well, and they are joining the European League of Football. What makes the team so competitive? Um, I think you guys talked about the Nachwuchs program just when I joined in. Um, I think that's something really unique about the Vikings and I coached um, there too um, for a couple of years. Um, it's just something you don't really see in Europe, um, at least not from a lot of clubs. Um, but it's just like all the players we get up, um, it's consistent. Every year we get um five to ten good players that can immediately play with the other adult guys um which is something really rare i think and um the level of those guys keeps improving year by year um which tells us coaches that we have to be doing something right um and so i think that's gonna be um something important for the vikings that those homegrown players maybe outperform one or two imports from the other teams um which um, obviously makes up space for imports on our side um, so that imports and homegrown players combined um, just equal a better football team than the other guys. And what's your prediction? How far will the, Vi uh, will the Vienna Vikings go this season? Um, hopefully to the end. Um, I don't know. I think what we learned last year is that uh, the team with the better quarterback um, wins more games um i think both of the best quarterbacks in the league played in the final um so i don't know the quarterback we have i have never seen him play um but I, if he's a good one i think we can take it all the way
Chris, would you pick a quarterback who isn't the best of the best? <laughs> <laughs> we we do our best to make sure we have a guy over here um, and have some consistency. I mean, we've been changing quarterbacks for, um, you know, we had an Austrian quarterback uh, for, for nine years play for the Vikings. And, you know, we, we thought that was going to be the way, but sometimes you got to bring over an American. And it's nice if those Americans like me stay for 15 years and, and uh, can have some consistency with the receivers over time. And uh, we got a guy this year, Jackson Erdman, who he had a lot of success. He played 47 straight games, which is something we're looking for, some durability. Um, we're looking for high completion percentage. I think his career completion percentage was 69.8. That's uh, very high. Uh, a guy who makes a lot of plays. Obviously, he threw a lot of touchdowns, um, but he he won awards every season that he played. So um, it's it's something that you have to see when he gets over here. All those numbers are pretty and everything, uh, but it comes down to how hard he's going to work, how well he gels with his receivers, how well um, the offensive coordinator and him get on rhythm. And um, you know, we're hoping that it that it all happens very quickly. And he feels comfortable over here in, in Vienna. His grandmother was actually born in Vienna. So he does have some, some family still over here, which is, a, which is a big thing. And his family already have plans to come out and watch the ELF games uh, here in Vienna and around Europe. So uh, a lot of excitement for, for him and uh, all of our import guys that are coming over. So Bernhard, last but not least, what do you think of the ELF? And could you see yourself play in the league? like in the future after your NFL career? Um, I've been I've been waiting for something for a league like this for a long time in Europe. I think that's really something that has to be established in Europe, especially for all those young kids. We just talked about the Nahooks program and all those kids need a goal they, they have to work to, right? And when they look at the soccer kids, they get money when they turn 16 or something and drive their new cars and stuff and they have to pay still for for participating basically um so i think that's really something important that this got established um now it's year two so um hopefully it gets better and better every year more professional um maybe um, a little bit more money and stuff like that so it keeps growing that would be awesome um, and I guess the end goal for this league in general would be that it's more like a farming farming league for the NFL. I think if that happens, um, that would be the ultimate goal um, um, because then more and more players get get to play over there. Um, and yeah, um, but I think it's um, much needed and um, I'm glad it's here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, the, uh, the European League of Football could become a stepping stone for young European talents to, to make it to the NFL a little bit easier than it was in the past. But of course, also, we want to give great football on a high level to all our European fans and to all the fans that love the sports. But of course, because of the time difference, watching the NFL, it's, it's always a bit, it, could be, it can be tiring. And on top of that, I mean, we have our season starting in June, finishing more or less when the NFL season starts, kicks off. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, we can enjoy football throughout the whole year, more or less. <laughs> yeah, that was always something I look forward to. Right, right when our season ended here in Austria, the NFL would kick off. So that was always something nice. But then in off season, in the cold winter in Vienna, we never had anything to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> well, all our fans are very much looking forward to the season, to the second season. And we are all very happy to have the Vienna Vikings on board. So thank you very much for being on the show today, for your time. And like I said, can't wait for the next season to start. Thank you, Jenny. Hey, Bernie, come by and visit. I hope to see you soon, man. Definitely. Yeah. Maybe at the championship game <laughs> when the Vikings <laughs> are going to rock the field. <laughs> yeah, and everyone, everyone watching, thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you for watching the show and uh, see you again next week. Thank you for having us. Bye. Thanks, Jenny.